Well, 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 the clock is ticking down and we are running out of time in 2020. But still, the inevitable continues to happen. New SCPs are made. Some scary, some fascinating, some absolutely ridiculous. So why not take a look at some of the newest of the new? That's right, it's time for the top 5 newest SCP Monsters 2020, part 7. But before we dive into the details, a word from today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Badass champions? Check. Tough bosses? Check. Millions of players? Check. Years of content and regular updates? Check. And check. Raid Shadow Legends has it all. I've been playing Raid for seven or eight months now and what keeps me coming back is their massive, awesome community. So if you want to be part of the largest community in mobile gaming, come check out Raid Shadow Legends. There are millions of players every month, with over 100,000 members on Discord, thousands of videos each week, and almost 40,000 members on Reddit. Speaking of not going in alone, there are also over 200,000 clans in existence, so you can find your crew and get to fighting. Add in nearly 1,000 videos about Raid being posted a week, you may never worry again. So if you feel a little overwhelmed while facing down enormous bosses or picking the best champions, there's always a way to find out out more. If you don't know what an artifact does, go ask someone on Discord. Or if you're looking for some PvP tips, check out a YouTube video. The possibilities are limitless. Personally, I like how many different champions there are, all with unique skill sets. If you want to build a tank team, I can fire Seducer, Stone Skin, Centurion, and Executioner. But if I want to go full DPS, I can roll Martyr, Steel Skull, Light Sworn, and Apothecary. There are so many options with some truly wicked looking champions too. Of course, plenty of new stuff is being added to the game all the time. Right now, the Doom Tower is in development and it is a doozy. 120 floors of super hard levels and even harder bosses. Get ready to take on the Frost Spider, Magma Dragon, Tomb Crab, and more. Go to the video description, click on the special links, and if you're a new player, you will get 100,000 silver and a free champion, Hex Weaver. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. Phone. Haha. -ha. Good luck, and I'll see you out there. On to our SCPs. Coming at number 5, we've got SCP-5733. Ah, uh, good old haunted VHS tapes. This one's extra special too. So, this is a cassette tape that plays the movie Return of the Suburb Slayer. Pretty on the nose, don't you think? Well, the movie plays out pretty predictably with a young woman named Heather Campbell throwing a party at her suburban home. Folks are out of town, friends are ready to drink, and of course, there was a killing spree at that location 10 years ago today. As the party starts, the suburb slasher returns with a vengeance. Folks are slaughtered left, right, and center by this mass maniac. Sounds like a pretty classic horror movie, right? Well, it is until the 97th minute, and that's not just a figure of speech. At that point, the tape starts acting a little funky. At minute 95, Heather finds all of her friend's corpses staged in the living room, followed by the slasher entering. The slasher chases her into the basement, and Heather locks the door. Then she turns to the camera and addresses the viewer, kind of like how I'm doing now. Heather usually says something along the lines of, Hey mister, I don't know you, but I don't know why you've just sat there watching this without doing nothing, but please, I'm begging you, Help me out here. What can I do to survive this? And at that point, you can go full Dora the Explorer and suggest what Heather might do to avoid the lunatic waiting upstairs for her. Anything you try to tell her at that point will play out on screen, but if you do nothing at all, she'll just walk up the stairs and unlock the door. If she dies, the tape ejects automatically. However, it seems as though the slasher has an answer for anything that the viewer suggests. If you tell Heather to drive away, she'll make it to the car and then find the slasher in the back seat. If you tell her to seek assistance from others, she'll head to the neighbor's house and find them murdered too. If you tell her to subsist on rations from the basement for months, train her in combat, and then get her to fight the killer, another instance of the slasher will show up behind her and kill her as she tries to fight the first one. It all seems pretty hopeless to be honest. In one final experiment, a researcher tried to completely randomize the survival tactics. Heather managed to make it out of town, away from the killer, and into a void-like area. However, in the end, the killer caught up to her and had their face revealed. Under the mask was the face of the very researcher attempting to help the young woman. Yikes. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to give it a like. It really helps us out with the algorithm. On to the next one. Coming in at number four, we've got SCP-5495. This strange metal tube is a component of a non-functional para weapon. It's got ontokinetic effects on nearby people, places, and things. On its own, these effects are pretty random, violent, and hard to control, although researchers theorize that if they were used in tandem with the rest of the weapon that it seems to be missing from, there would be more focused effects. A couple of teens had found it, along with ammunition and food, in an abandoned 
abandoned storage facility. They took the cylinder with them, thinking it might be worth some money. After a while, they tried to crack into it, wondering what was inside. This revealed the core, which had been latently lowering the local reality level. Of course, this was only the beginning. With the seal removed, it was going to work twice as fast. One of the teens fell ill soon after this, as reality around them failed. His bedroom seemed kilometers long, but could be traversed in one step. He'd sound like he was vomiting, but be totally fine. And this contamination spread quickly too. Corpses wandered around after death. Technicolor explosions were reported and screams were everywhere. It was a fascinating and terrifying time for all. It spread and spread, infecting hundreds of people, causing widespread collapse in the area. Since then, the foundation has contained all the living affected people and cremated the remains of anyone who died from the influence of the tube. Coming in at number three, we've got SCP-5366. Speaking of anomalies and death, here's a totally weird one, 5366 is a designation for a phenomenon observed at burial sites around the world. Apparently when a living person speaks lovingly towards the grave of someone they were in a serious relationship with, all sorts of strange things can happen. These include dramatic increases in wind speed, stones moving around while unobserved, flowering plants growing and decaying rapidly, crows and other corvids gathering in nearby trees, and stress levels increasing in dogs. These weird quantitative changes aren't the whole anomaly though. It is much, much worse than that. After miking up some nearby graves, Foundation agents discovered that a couple that had been separated separated by death caused some very strange things to happen. As the living individual reminisced atop their lover's grave, the buried individual seemed to spring to life in the worst possible way. See, they came to life, but were unsure why, couldn't move, and felt nothing but cold. And this was the first instance of that happening. Over the years, the living individual kept returning to the burial site, not knowing that their late partner would return to quasi-life every time they did so. Every time they returned, it would be worse. They'd be more decomposed, more panicked, and would feel the roots in the earth growing into them. All they want is for their partner to forget them, because it seems as though they only come back to this awful form of life when they're nearby. But the person on the surface can't possibly know this, and for them, forgetting their lover completely would be just as painful. Memories are a Coming in at number two, we've got SCP-5680, an anomalous bird assembly line. Why not? There are a bunch of machines somewhere in Spain that seem to spit out bird specimens. However, more often than not, they'll fire out less the complete bird things. Fleshy, gross, yikes. One of the machines involved is an acid bath that can turn any matter into bird organs, and another is a set of robotic arms that's capable of assembling these goopy parts into organic life forms. These machines are run by strange humanoids, always grimacing and without any internal organs. So if you put anything into the receiving end of 5680, it will be processed into a living avian specimen. The Foundation has witnessed many birds being made here, from gulls, game birds, to birds of prey. No pattern though. Although most come out incomplete and don't live longer than a couple hours. It's pretty awful to Hold. In addition to the terrible bird making, the assembly line also seems to operate like a business. However, the business doesn't make any sense whatsoever. The assembly line workers all speak in exclusively corporate jargon, and faxes that are received at the location are total nonsense. The whole thing feels like an algorithm was taught how to run a company via old movies and Wikipedia pages and just was left to its own devices. Huh. And finally at number one, we've got SCP-5178. Our final new SCP of the day is an elderly man. His identity is a mystery, but he has been referred to as broadcast station WYLI by a person of interest. 5178 is in a constant semi-catatonic state and rarely reacts to any outside stimuli. He can heal from physical damage at an extremely fast rate and doesn't need to eat or sleep. Protruding from his abdomen is a radio from the 90s. It works and doesn't seem to bother him much. If you do anything to the radio, from tuning it to another station to turning it completely off, he'll correct that. But every once in a while, a talk show will play from the speakers. It's called Eat the Sun with Seth Uhar and features monologues from a man who claims he's from a society way beyond our grasp. His main talking point is that humanity should totally detach itself from seeing the sun as a good thing. In fact, he calls himself an anti-solarist. He usually just rambles on about the sun, performs skits showing a vague grasp of human behavior, and plays songs about the sun at faster and slower speeds than they should be. Of course, it's not just an anomalous radio station attached to an elderly man. No, it is a cognito hazard too. That's right. Folks who listen to it will be compelled to listen more, and if they listen more, they'll start acting weird. Like, they'll try to destroy the sun in the mini solar system that is SCP-576 just to see what happens. Or they'll wear sunglasses when it's not appropriate to wear sunglasses. They'll access other sun-related SCP files without any work-related reasons, and worst of all, they'll overuse the sun emoji. Oh, and some folks, after increased exposure to the broadcast, will develop little abdomen radios of their own that will broadcast this to the world. Uh-oh. 
Better keep an eye on the sun. Who knows what'll happen? Sweet! Five fresh SCPs delivered to your eyes and ears. What'd you think of the list? What's the best new SCP we've covered so far? Have you been writing your own in hopes that it'll be immortalized on the site? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more devilish ones from the top five horror locations you should never visit. I'm Eric Ghost says, why should you never visit? In fact, you give the locations. I'm sorry, I should have winked when I said that. Take my recommendations as you will. Carolyn Alice says, forget about the ghosts of the Overlook Hotel. The fact that the Timberline is built on an active volcano should be scary enough. Yeah, there's the possibility of an explosive fiery death, but the skiing is immaculate. Piggy Lump says, I grew up and still live in Maine, so most of Stephen King's tales and movies make me nervous. So many scary stories come out of Maine, even if you count out King. Why is that? EJ Young Music says, Haddonfield is in New Jersey. Well, sure, yeah, the real place that is Haddonfield, but the Haddonfield that Michael Myers rampages around in is in Illinois. And Pumpkin Patch Exotic says, What is Lewis Table Tennis up to these days? Well, he's been selected to take part in a top secret ping pong development program. The details are not for public consumption. And that's all the time we have for today. I'm going to attempt to hike the Dyatlov Pass solo. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Now for some raid! <laughs>